Welcome to the Rhymers Z Podcast. This month we are covering remembering our lessons, which can mean many different things for those undergoing change. In the States, you know, uh, we're getting really close to 4th of July, which was a big change, obviously. We're, and I just want to give a little brief history. A lot of people know about 4th of July, but people don't understand that also July 5th, 9, uh, 1775 is when the Olive Branch petition was expressed hope for reconciliation <laughs> with the British. Um, it was turned down, and here we are. Uh, a lot of times decisions and, you know, the lessons we learn uh, kind of shaped the world around us. Uh, Apollo 11, 1969, was a lunar landing. They launched it on, on July 16th, 1969. Another thing that's near and dear to my heart, I'm half South Korean, June 25th was last month, was the start of the Korean War. But in July 27th was when they signed the Amnesty, uh, basically the ceasefire, and where right now, um, what we have the modern day Korea today. But it's also a reminder of the lessons we learn for us, us as individuals. When we undergo change, whether we like it or not, there is sometimes, you know, hard times, but there's also. A lot of times, some lessons we can learn along the way. I want to say we have a new guest. His name is Andre Kozlovsky. I messed it up now. Kozlovsky, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your insight. Thank you for having me on your amazing show and for this opportunity to be this beacon of light and hope to show everyone that nothing is set in stone, that everyone can change. And if I was able to change, so can you. Thank you, Andre. I just want to make a disclaimer for those in the States, but wherever you are working in the mental health field, I do encourage, I, well, I don't like reinventing the wheel. So whatever groups, whether small groups, whoever you deal with every day, if you are struggling, you know, find help, you know, find whatever help, you know, the hardest thing for adults to say is I need help. So. I encourage you to say those three words in those in that order. Um, it is humbling, but also it is something that reminds us that we need community. We need each other as much as we don't like to sometimes admit it as we grow older. I do like to start off with things that people have said, Andre, better than I have. There's a Swedish proverb that says it this way. Those who wish to sing always finds a song. You know, a lot of times we think about life and how it kind of Kind of extends I, I like the notion and thought that you know our lives are kind of a song and a lot of times people who enter our lives are kind of given the harmony or however you want to put it but it is kind of that artistic view of the idea of song being our whatever trajectory we end up in and having getting a moment i also want to say there's also another caveat and i'm gonna get your thoughts on this uh, Steve Jobs, he, you know, obviously the late Steve Jobs, he had something to say that I thought was important for us to remind ourselves: your time is limited. Don't waste it in living. Don't waste it living someone else's life. You know that whole reflection. The one, we're the only kind of people, uh, uh, these human beings that can we we can actually say we reflect on our lives. You know, and we actually have uh, experienced that. So listen, reading these. Uh, well, going over these two. Um, you know, the proverbs and the quote. What comes to mind, Anjay, when you think about that? Going for the those first. are amazing quotes. The first one is another way of saying, "If you have the will, you will find a way." Mm. So do not give up, mm -hmm. because if you have faith. The God, the universe, the nature, however you wish to call it, will give you the means to, for you to achieve your goals. Is it to be healthy again? Is it to achieve your goals, manifest your dreams? It will happen. You mm -hmm. just need faith and mm -hmm. do not interfere with the process because sometimes we wish things to happen so badly that we interfere with the process because we think it needs to happen this way or that way exactly the way we had in our head but the mm -hmm. thing is if that would happen 
the exact same way it would already happen. Mm -hmm. The universe is limitless. There are countless ways to achieve things. Mm -hmm. If we are limiting ourselves to only one possibility, we're not only limiting ourselves, but we're limiting the universe that is wanting to help us. You know, I, I like what you said because a lot of times when I'm, you know, when we're facing problems, I always find that um, even though I feel that pr problem solving is a lost art, <laughs> I think when we think about problems, we always think about, like you said, problem solution. But I would say solving problems is creative in nature. We have to be creative to solve the problems what we face daily because we are different like I, I could have a great plan and I'm working in the mental health field this happens a lot I may have a great plan I'd be like hey this will look great for you maybe <laughs> there's a maybe because the thing is if your person's not part of it if they're part not part of their journey or the journey of whatever they want to get to most times Anje it doesn't work out because the person has to be part of the solution part of the whole journey towards that problem solving and i do feel we miss something when we want to go to the like the goal the the outcome because we miss the process to that to that answer exactly and uh steve jobs kind of gives us a kind of subtle warning because a lot of times we're urgently like you said urgently try to do whatever it is so much or so little successful outward maybe the success is someone else's success but not your own so a lot of times what we don't have a lot of when it comes to the concept of life and death and i'm not trying to say this in the in anyone's uh, avenue of how they feel their faith or their spiritualism i'm not saying that i'm just saying in the avenues of what we can see here present right now i would say it's important to understand that time has a finite number you know at the same time in this concept in this plane and in that regards i do find it's important to know self understand what you what makes you what you know i could say what's successful for me will not be successful for andre you know what's successful for andre may not be successful for me and that's where i feel it's very important to recognize what those elements are any thoughts when it comes to that when it comes to time mm -hmm. all of us thinks we have more of time than we actually do so it's mm -hmm. very crucial to use it effectively mm -hmm. and if we allow ourselves to be used of, as an extension of someone else's mind or ego mm. what we would find is only grief and sadness because as you said our, not only our definitions are different mm. of success but i am me and you are you and mm. that makes us unique and mm. i can only be me everyone else is already taken I, I wouldn't be good to Robert. I don't know how to be how to be a Robert. I know how to be Andre and yeah. I can only be that person. Mm -hmm. So by being someone else, by allowing yourself to be used as an extension of somebody else, you will lose all the potential, all the uniqueness that you have. And to that you will only find grief and sadness and at the end of your journey you will only remember the opportunities lost what you could have done mm. what you could have become and that is something that i do not wish to anyone embrace the possibilities even if that seems like a huge mountain to climb mm -hmm. do it anyway you know you bring up such a valid point in, in regards to you know when i'm in you know dealing with people that are going through a lot i always say personalize your care don't personalize what happens outside like because because you can't control what we can't control but this also goes on context you know there's a there's a there's a kind of i say danger of generalizing everything so like if i'm say the word courage some people say um the word courage may mean many different things for of many different people uh, i served in the military so people you know denote courage as you know giving your life on the battlefield but if i was someone who was struggling let's say with substance use or something else that was 
um, really damaging. Uh, you know, that context of being courageous may be different. It may not be giving my life. It may be actually staying alive. So the idea in this concept from the known unknown quote, it says, if you want to show me that you really love me, don't say that you would die for me. Instead, stay alive for me. So there's a lot of difference in context, understanding that what's courageous for one person may be not courageous for another person. And I do feel that that's specific given the context of the environment that the person surrounded. But on the other nice lesson, you know, just like caveating Steve Jobs is Henry Ford. He, and I think there's a lot of lot to say and a lot of depth. So I want to get your opinion on both of these. He says, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. <laughs> it's kind of funny to say it that way. But if I feel like I can't do something, eventually it may become a reality because un unfortunately, I may not even know I'll be putting myself towards the to, towards that conclusion that I won't be able to do it. And one thing that you mentioned that I thought was interesting was a lot of us when we're young, there's an age, I know because I have nieces and nephews, that there's an age that everyone's the best dancer, everyone's the best singer, everyone's everything. Mm -hmm. And then that goes away. So like... There's some there's some innocence that I remember gets lost because of things that really are outside of our control. We are uh, consumed about how we're, our images towards others, except not taking a lot, lot of times reflecting on our own on, on our own self. So let me ask you, going back, so not to get too far ahead, what comes to mind when you see these quotes? You know, the unknown one, and then Henry Ford's. This quote resonates that people do not want to be left alone. Mm -hmm. If there is someone you love, like your wife, your spouse, mm -hmm. or even imagine this absurd scenario where you have kids, mm -hmm. you would absolutely want your kids to outlive you. Mm -hmm. So to also give some context what you said before words mean only what value you have assigned to them mm -hmm. so as you said courage can mean one thing to one person and mm -hmm. one thing to another and that many times can have an impact on conversation on relationship because although we use the same words we mm -hmm. use different definitions and that enables two people to get on the same page of the story of the book mm. and if you value someone like you value your loved one you want those relationships to be authentic to be true and that would require you to let go of your attachments how you should be perceived mm -hmm. or that it would require you to be able to embrace pain when it's needed. Especially now, we have it very easy to make new relationships with all the dating apps. We can just swipe left, we can just mm -hmm. swipe right, mm -hmm. but it doesn't last because people are afraid to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. They put a show in front of people, they wear mm -hmm. masks, that people want to wear, but it doesn't last because it's not authentic and people get easily bored. And in these times, it seems relationships took, relationships became something that is not as important to people mm -hmm. because we can always dump ourselves with stimulus from outside. Yeah, and there's no there's so many distractions and you know, you mentioned there was a there was one um one thing i wanted to share it was it just it was on the top of my um it was from uh france Co francis kafka and he said uh, in essence i was trying to find the quote because i did i had it on my phone actually i thought it was very interesting how he he, he actually said this but if I can't find it, I'll paraphrase. He basically said, um, you know, I felt in, in terms of life, he's like, I was vastly disappointed when I went to um, 
uh, party, um, I guess, uh, went to this um, gathering, and he's representing life, and I brought my real face while everyone was mm-hmm. wearing masks. You know, this idea of authenticity that you're mentioning, it, it, it is something, you know, there, there's that one, um, you know, a lot of studies that if I seem so perfect, let's just say that in the, in the eyes of a I'm going to be less and less approachable you know, because of ideas that, you know, you're not relatable. And the, the ideas, you know, the, the sometimes the reasons for to be perfect is to draw people to you, which kind of mm-hmm. counteracts that because honestly, we don't embrace uh, the idea variety. that we are we're human. Yeah, variety and that we're human. Um, a lot of times, you know, obviously I have my biases because I work in the mental health field and what I see gets lost and this happens mm-hmm. in different sectors is dignity is literally just dignity the fact that they are still people you know mm-hmm. a lot of times they, there's no other there's not many other areas of health that you know you are also abiding or fighting for your value for something mm-hmm. you didn't cause yourself there's something that you didn't mm-hmm. you know there may be things that you may have negative habits or stuff that can improve on but you didn't ask to have depression you didn't ask to have bipolar you didn't ask to have schizophrenia you didn't ask for all this stuff however you're not only getting a diagnosis and families not knowing what to do you also have to kind of fight against the idea of whether you're valuable any, anymore or not you know and this is something that you see a lot of times that struggle i mentioned korea before because right now i don't know if it's changed but korea is the number one country with the highest rate of suicides in the whole world at this moment so it's just something that for me i find um uh uh, you know, it's it's it is something that I find very interesting in, in the idea of how we will we will paint a, a, a brave face, we will wear our mask, mm. but it's very superficial. It doesn't amount to the, the authentic. To nothing. Yeah. And, and going, uh, sorry. Go uh, sorry. If you if you really think about it, wouldn't that mask wouldn't be perfect? Is just escape from reality, a coping mechanism. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the danger is, and like I think the most dangerous um, thing is when we don't know that there is a problem. The apathy, mm-hmm. apathy, kind of gets kind of seated deep, and we're like, oh, this is the norm because this is what everyone else is doing, and I'm going to be busy because if I'm busy, then I'm more valuable. But when is there ever time for Anja? <laughs> when is there any yeah. time for me? And uh, you know, uh, Henry Ford, I think, just coins. I think in this regard, shifting gears, it does give an element of thought you know, of how we think about ourselves and our abilities mm-hmm. are important. Uh, and what do you think of this quote or this, this thought? Andre? The mind, the brain is very similar to computer. It processes data to make decision. Mm-hmm. Unlike other computers, it operates on different frequencies. And the computer called the mind wants to give you what you're looking for it's called confirmation bias placebo Mm -hmm. effect or Mm self-fulfilling prophecy yeah the sages of the past used to say that be aware of your thoughts Mm -hmm. because your thoughts become will become your words Mm -hmm. your words will become your actions yeah your actions will become your experiences which will definitely craft your character and ultimately give you your destiny Mm -hmm. so if you think you're right your (laughs) mind will give you all the experiences to make it so if you think you're not right the same thing will happen that's interesting you mentioned confirmation bias you know if and that's that's the that's the troubling part um that we are very adaptable but sometimes not in the best way for ourselves when it comes to these these issues one thing i want to also mention is uh you know we're, we're you know in regards to um our uh, I, you know i i keep uh i think about this idea and i went to a conference and it was, it was this presenter he said um we talk about Freud, we talk about, you know, just some of the founders of modern day psychology, but Adler is someone that a lot of people don't hear a lot about. He talks about belonging. 
he talks about belonging a lot, the belongingness. And one thing he coined this idea, especially with veterans, but I think it's very valid to, you know, in, in, in the context of connecting and working through some of the lessons that we're facing or have faced. The question is, that, let's say I'm supporting you. Let's say I am helping you, Andre. The, that usually where, that's where it ends. So like, okay, Robert is supporting Andre. But the question is quality. So the, the, the thought exercise is not only am I, so I'm fighting for Andre. Now, will Andre fight for me? Interesting. Interesting. The idea that, that it's not just one way. It's how we connect and how we, and the, and I feel it's, it, it was modeled in the military of just how to build teams because it's not just, okay, I'm going to help this person, but you inspire by the quality in your character to for them to also want to fight for you and this kind of models a more authentic connection that you would see elsewhere and then a lot of times when you go to work or in the, in the public private sector is enoughness I'm, I'm i have this degree i have this accolade i have this degree but let's just start talking about how we treat ourselves and those around us mm -hmm. and how you know and where how do we get to where we at because you know, I tell you one thing, working, it's a very humbling experience working in the mental health field because there's never, there's not enough out there. There's never enough for anyone. And then the thing is, a lot of times I'm talking to a person just like I'm talking to you. I have nothing to give them, but what do I give them? Time. I listen to Your them. time. And I Always. hear them. And, you know, a lot of times, not to say it solves anything, but something they lacked. And like going back to the dignity, their humanity, they're no longer a person that's a burden you know or something that doesn't belong anywhere they belong here i'm trying but i can't get everything but they appreciate my time if that makes sense um i want to uh, i want to shift i want to shift gears a lot of times i a new guests old guests returning guests i like to give them an opportunity to share a little bit about yourself to those who are listening as we pause a little bit so Andre, thank you for coming on. I want to give you an opportunity to share a little bit about what you, what brought you to where you're where you're at today. Maybe a little bit of your story if you're comfortable about it, and then we'll continue and wrap up this episode. Go ahead. Before My you're... journey started with the first step, on which I made all the mistakes possible that eventually got became my experience. Mm. And when I was a young boy, I noticed that. I saw reality differently. I could sense more. I could mm -hmm. feel more. So I came to the only possible explanation. Mm -hmm. I'm crazy. I'm the odd one and I need to be healed. Mm -hmm. So I started this journey to make me whole again. This mystical escapade or holy grail but there was nothing wrong with me. So that search was doomed to fail from the start. Mm -hmm. Hopefully I have been traveling from the West to the East, studying countless modalities mm -hmm. from psychology, dietetics, NLP, hypnosis, coaching, mm -hmm. traditional Chinese medicine. Currently I'm a Shaolin apprentice mm -hmm. and student of esoteric Tao. I found out that I was an empath, highly sensitive person that allows me to feel other people's emotion and mm -hmm. that was overwhelming. So it seems that I just didn't accept myself because mm -hmm. once I stopped fighting with my nature, who I was mm -hmm. and embraced that, it seems like all pieces fall into the right place. Mm. And now I'm helping those on similar path as me, so they can feel whole, they can thrive, not only survive. Mm. I, 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 you know, I, I like, you know, when it comes to the idea, what you said at the end, thrive versus surviving. You know, there's there's a toll that happens when people just survive. There's a toll. That happens in the person's mindset, attitude, um, view. Um, when I was in um, 
a leader in church, one of the things I asked a lot of times is the the biggest perspective is how, especially people in the Christian faith, how they see God. Because how they see God is how they're going to see everyone else and themselves. It's kind of funny how that works. So if someone comes to me and they're really struggling uh, and we talk about this. If they feel God's a vengeful, wrathful God, they'll feel that that's that, that I, they'll mm. respond accordingly. If they feel God is distant and God, they're going to treat people distantly and they're going to treat themselves like God. It's like they'll have that kind of still similar. And this is not something that. Oh, is it tr- it's just because it's so complex when you're dealing with um, these avenues. Because when you ask the question, why, what, why are you doing what you're doing? It, it's it's sometimes a very loaded question. I remember when I got out of the military in 2004, I served 2000, 2004. I was very bitter, Andre. I was bitter because I was. You know, I was sick. I was unwell, and you know, I didn't continue on because I served my four years, but I knew I wasn't doing well, and I was reluctant for a long time. And you know who I was bitter with? People still at home because you know, I was, you know, I was serving. I didn't get the care. I didn't ask for care. You know, I was, you know, you know, partially doing, you know drinking heavily but not on top, on top of that having onset of mental health issues on top of that <laughs> i just remember um the one thing that kind of helped me in the last few years was brazilian jiu-jitsu tell you the truth brazilian jiu-jitsu i started doing that and it, it, it provided me a structure that i needed at that time sometimes there's a season for everything you know you you're experiencing something and something just gets you a little bit further and when I got out, I was bitter towards those people who didn't suffer the way I did. You know, people, I go to these support groups and they're like, I'm, I'm upset because um, so, uh, I wasn't allowed to do the so-and-so. And I got angry. And you know what happened? I stopped going. But later on, I w- started going again and I was facilitating groups. And I missed out. You know, my anger, how I, how I, uh, you know, this kind of isolation we kind of do. There's no way that these people will understand or know what I went through. And it's not their fault that they don't. <laughs> it's kind of funny that we put this on them. But honestly, that was I, my own self became my own barrier to what I really, what I'm doing today. And so it's kind of interesting. Sometimes we look all over the place, all over the world to find what we're looking for. Mm-hmm. And it's right in front of us. So... Um, my helping other people, you know, became my healing, you know, yes. you know that kind of concept, you know, I, you know, I never was one, um, uh, uh, rigid when it came to the idea of how, how right I am. I think a lot of times we have a lot of information nowadays, <laughs> so much information, but what we don't have a lot is on Jay is a lot of understanding of it. You know, we just have so much of it and, I want to ask you as you know it's, it's i appreciate you sharing i appreciate you sharing uh, that you have uh your story as part of it and also just just you know your experience and that you're open-minded to different modalities you're open-minded to seeing because there, there's something i think there's lessons in a lot of people you know even the ones that you may not feel are the ones that should have the lessons i feel truth um i think if we just look at factual truths but we're not we're not ones and zeros we're people with feelings with context so i just i do appreciate that but i want to ask you this question as we continue onward what lessons have you seen worked for you or others regarding life and then the little change that we all are subjected to so it seems like you went through a bit of change what helped you through that and what do you see has helped those around you that you've seen whatever you feel comfortable sharing Andre. nothing lasts forever if you look outside mm. currently it's summer it won't last it will become fall soon enough mm-hmm. that won't last it won't it will become winter soon enough mm-hmm. and even that won't last mm-hmm. all forms cease to exist sooner or later mm. that means all of the state in the mind all of the states of thoughts would also cease to exist 
Mm -hmm. So if there is change for you or if you're going through the change right now, relax. It's normal. In fact, lack of change, that would be worrisome. Mm. Because everything is flowing. Mm. And when it's not flowing, it's rigid. And the things that are rigid in these bodies, in this the things that are rigid in this world are dead mm. bodies. Mm. Do you want to be dead? Mm. It's interesting because a lot of times, um, you know, in church settings, just giving this as a context, as an illustration, um, people fear change in churches, you know, especially and understandably in some contexts. But sometimes they will say a sentence that I want things to be better, Andre. But they wanted things to be better without changing it. Yes. So, like when you, when you go through this rational thought, you're like, well, you can't, you know, there's no change; it won't get better. And even if there is, um, you know, the thing also is that there's also another moving element: life. <laughs> even if you don't yes. change, everything around you does change. So, I usually use this illustration because I think it's a good illustration, and then I want to kind of get your final thoughts as we wrap up. This is so wonderful to have you. Um, but what I want you to think of while I'm telling you the story is why do you think remembering our lessons is important? And what would you like to say to those um, listening today, that kind of thing? So the story I want to share, like the illustration is uh, in what we're talking about. If I was, let's say I was a basketball player. So it uses a lot. And if I was a basketball player in high school, I was really good, right? Let's say it's really, really good. And my goal is to be MVP for the NBA and win the championship, all that stuff. I will not be successful until I get that. Okay. So I'm training, 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 training. But what happens, just like the church model, life happens around me. What happens if my mom gets sick and dies? What if my something happens? I, I'm married and something happens to my kid. All these things can happen along the way. What also happens is the pressure cuts builds up. I'm not getting there. I'm not getting the kind of um, playing time that I want and this and that's and this. Now, the sad story about this, this story, this illustration is this person loved basketball. It may help them, maybe run, reminded them of good mm -hmm. things when they were younger. But now because he's not reaching his apex or where he wants to be, it now has less value and now he doesn't even like basketball altogether it's a sad story because the thing is he doesn't even embrace the process and, 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 and embrace the basketball itself it's all about elsewhere i need to get mm. elsewhere to be happy and unfortunately a person who loved basketball loved the sport dedicated all his lives will end up hating mm. the sport itself because he only sees the destination, not the embracing the process towards that destination. You know, and I, I that's the illustration I want to share as we. Mm -hmm. um, if you think about it, it's okay to have goals. It's okay to have dreams, mm -hmm. but if you allow those dreams, those goals, those daily improvements to use you. Mm -hmm then you will lose yourself in the process. You will yeah. become obsessed and yeah. that will burn you out. And mm -hmm. something that you used to love, now you won't be able to look at because all you could see is those unfulfilled dreams. Yeah. So like I was saying before, I was going to share this short story illustration. What, what? Why do you think remembering our lessons is important? And what would you want to share as the final thought as we wrap things up, Andre, on lessons and anything that you think will be helpful for those who are listening? You mentioned that you were going to church. Let's say a person asks God for strength. Hmm. Would God give you the strength? or would give you opportunities for you to grow strong. Mm -hmm. I believe yeah. it's the second one. I believe so too. So if you are facing challenges in your life, embrace them because they are hidden opportunities for your growth. And yeah. life is happening based on patterns. 
based on repeated patterns. It seems like we have some lessons to learn in this life. And if we don't, that lesson will sooner or later repeat itself. Mm. Although it would look a bit different to confuse you with something else. So if you do not recall where you have failed, you want to be prepared for the future and your life will go into these loops, mm. always giving you the same results. Yeah. And I think as I would say as a final thought, you know, when it comes to lessons, remembering our lessons, one thing we lose and not just being saying that I'm the best singer, or best dancer when, when you're a kid is curiosity. You know, a lot of times one thing about life that is very, um, I think valuable is our curiosity. You know, it, it, it sparks creativity. It sparks our, our desire to do more. Um, there's, there's this intangible growth that comes within us when we we see ourselves as valuable without the constraints of, or um, standards that are outside. You know, we're not saying we're the best person at whatever we're doing, but we are still valuable, uh, let alone. And a lot of times when I feel, especially in my field, when someone is getting to that point where they say, hey, you know, I'm, you know, you know, this is not working out, but I know I'm still valuable. I know I'm still valued. You know, I'm. You know, this this was a rough patch. It wasn't just, oh, because of my mental health. No, I actually maybe may have made a mistake, but I'm human. I'm going to make steps to improve that mistake. When we take accountability and we don't really get stuck on it, I do feel curiosity is able to happen again. Creativity mm -hmm. of how we're going to explore and navigate life becomes. And life becomes more richer because we don't have the expectation that we're just going to figure it all out. We kind of expect it not to be that way, but we're all here along for the ride per se. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's embracing that idea that, Hey, we may not have it all figured out, but that's okay. Let's, let's keep going one day at a time. That's very okay. In fact, <laughs> if I don't know if you play games, but mm -hmm. let's assume you do. If you would know everything about the game, all the hidden location, all the ways you can get better, like playing on cheat, cheats, <laughs> yeah. that game wouldn't give you any joy whatsoever. Mm -hmm. We can experience the good things because bad things happen to us. We can enjoy the rainbow because we know what it's like to live under the storm. So mm -hmm. it's all it's all there for a purpose and i believe that everything between heaven and earth is perfect it's just mm. we humans make it complicated with our thoughts our cravings our attachments our beliefs how the world should be but the world is as it is it's that we are fighting constantly with it mm. and once we allow to just be yourself, who we are, then this conflict dissolves. Once we stop fighting ourselves, mm -hmm. the universe also stops fighting with us. And then it got so rich, so full that each day is a joy. Yeah. You know, um, I think some part of it is um, this idea that we'll have, we could create our certainty, if that makes sense. We cannot, you know, unfortunately, but we can also, we can, what we focus on, what we can control. You know, one thing that I think is beneficial for those who are listening or watching is be kind to yourself. Be kind to those around you. You know, a lot of people say, well, I, I don't have time to help people. You go to a restaurant, they get their, your order wrong. Be kind. You know, that's just a kind word. I, I remember... Uh, when I, you know, was a leader in church and like, you know, as I saw, one thing that I loved about, you know, some of the, when I read the Bible was more about the questions, not about what <laughs> the questions. And one of the, as I end on this is the good Samaritan. A lot of people look at the good Samaritan, like how could the person walk around the person, all this stuff. My whole thing was the first question that brought this whole parable. Who is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor is a context of what a lot of us struggle with today. 
Our neighbor is everyone. Our neighbor is you, me, whatever. You may not agree with people, and that's okay. But at the same time, I do feel that we could be kind. Remember that, you know, uh, when we have lessons, and this, I know I'm kind of, especially with those who are in substance use, people who use substances and had a hard time. One time, one of the sad things I've seen is someone who recovered for 20 years, haven't been using, will be very rigid to those who first <laughs> are you know, having struggles. Um, I said, be kind. Remember our lessons as part of what I'm also saying with that. I know I went a little long-winded on that. Any last final words as we kind of wrap up? Thank you again, Andre, for sh- coming on and sharing your thoughts. Thank you. The pleasure was all mine. I wish you all the best and relax. I yeah. think that's a very important lesson. But all of us eventually will die. So there is no need to take it so seriously. Mm-hmm. If we take it so seriously, we won't be able to enjoy it. Mm-hmm. And life should be enjoyed. And for yeah. that to happen, there will be some experiences that we will not enjoy. It's, it's basics of life. Yeah. Again, thank you, Andre. I just want to share with um, those who are listening, um, watching our, you know, Stay updated with Revive Ministry through the various platforms. RevivalMinistry.com is our website. It links to everything. We have YouTube, and we also have the... Um, you can actually go on the website and actually listen to the, um, the podcast episodes on the site. Again, I'm leaving with this last quote, and it's, it's an interesting one because I do feel a lot of times honest. There's something called healthy tension. It's okay to have a little tension, but you know, at the same time, it's also okay to you know slow down it's okay to not be always perfect in the standards outside of yourself it's okay to be not okay in that regard so the uh, french proverb says good advice is often annoying <laughs> bad advice is never is <laughs> kind of interesting but i think a lot of us can understand what that means thanks you again Andre, for coming on and being a part of this discussion thank you for having me no problem